Shapam, it's Iron Rain. Oh. Uh. <laughs> Hi, I'm Max. And I'm Tycho, and we're from FTC Team 6832 Iron Rain. So, while uh, we were waiting for our uh, modern robotics control stuff to, to ship, we decided to just have some fun, I guess, testing out the Android control system for robotics. This is our robot Argos. It is a one-fifth scale RC rock crawler with a plywood platform on top where we've mounted our ZTE speed bomb in a pan tilt configuration using servos and servo blocks from Servo City. We also got a breadboard up there on the top for prototyping, but for now we most we really just use it as a power bus. So, we should just mention here that we moved inside because of the mosquitoes. We just talked about the breadboard. Moving on. This here is a YoYo OTG board. That's spelled IOIO OTG. This lets the Android phone speak to low level hardware. It provides some 46 digital IO pins. Right now, we're just using six of the 5 volt tolerant pins for the PWM outputs and inputs. There are plenty of other pins that can be used for analog input and output, for I2C or SPI, and for general purpose I.O. Right now it's connected to the phone using this Bluetooth dongle here, where it can be connected directly with this USB OTG cable. You can access its pins and low-level functions through a Java API, and both the hardware and the software are open source. So, as you might have guessed, that the, the program we're using here is a chromovore. It uses that stick there as its target right now. Um, so it seeks the color that we identify with the touch on the screen. It was built off the color blob tech sample that comes with the OpenCV4 Android. OpenCV is probably the most popular open source computer vision library. The sample program lets you touch an area of the screen to identify a color that you'd like to track. Then it finds all the similar blobs of color and outlines them on the screen as you can well, you can probably see on the camera there it has all of the orange stuff outlined with the green line we added two new calculations for each camera frame first we calculate the area of each blob so we can sort them by size and just track the largest of them we calculate the centroid, the center of mass for each blob so we can see how far it is from the center of the screen that gives us a target for our pan and tilt servos. They are constantly trying to aim the camera at the, at the center of mass of the largest colored log. So now we're going to show you our robot moving. This remote controller here is the one that came with the rock crawler that we built on. We configured it as a dead man switch. So the receiver is connected to the yo-yo which decodes the PWM value. You have to pull the throttle trigger to allow the robot to move, but the throttle doesn't control the actual speed. It only allows the desired speed to be sent on to the ESC. Otherwise, we send a 1500 millisecond PWM signal to the ESC so the robot stops. So we simply release the trigger if something goes wrong and Argos gets too friendly with the bystander. So, here you go. It's going to move towards the stick. Now that it's at its set distance, if you move the stick a little closer, it'll try to go backwards, like that. The desired speed is based on the area of the current largest blob. We take the square root of the difference between the, the current size of the blob and the size it was when it was identified. The square root helps to linearize the signal a bit. This becomes our distance error. The robot tries to maintain the distance it was from the object when it was most recently set. This can get a bit squirrely when the detected outline changes under varying lighting. We've used simple proportional control over all four servos, which seems to be good enough for now. So as of this point, the steering is simply slaved to the pan servo here. Of course, it changes direction based on whether or not it's going backwards. The problem we have is that our steering is, has a horribly large radius, so we need to do some mechanical fixes for that. But as of this point, we can still do some simple endpoint turns. So we still have a lot of work remaining to do on this robot. The machine vision stuff is some of the hardest stuff that we've tackled so far. 
and there are a number of other methods for tracking objects that we should probably try out.